grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning and welcome to St. Hilda's and St. Luke's Anglican Church in St. Thomas and Trinity Church in Elmer as we worship together through uh, social media. We continue to do all that is necessary to keep us safe and healthy. I am in the church at St. Hilda St. Luke's with two other people and we're social distancing and making sure that we keep each other safe and in so doing remind you as well to be safe and as church and state might have said, stay home is a rather awkward statement according to today's, to today's gospel reading, but we'll hear more about that later. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 139 and again it's, it's a wonderful psalm that speaks of our true identity and relationship with God. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips but you, O oh Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven into the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. May your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with radiance, with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped and obeyed, to the ends of the earth, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. 
The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to them, we have found him about whom Moses and the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of Christ. Today we continue our epiphany journey. Like the wise men, they followed the star and they came and saw Jesus. Like the shepherds, after hearing the words of the angel on that first Christmas, they too, they went and they saw and they believed. Epiphany means some sort of opening or revelation or discovery. And today's theme continues that disclosure of who the child we worship at Christmas has now an adult. And he is being made known to Andrew and to Philip and then to Nathaniel. And the invitation is to come and see, to come and see for yourselves. That come and see continues through the experience of Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Come and see for yourselves. There's an old wise saying that says, God has no grandchildren that we are all the children of God. And we are all invited to come and discover ourselves. Who is the Christ for us? Who is the one made flesh, God incarnate in humankind? And so Philip says to Nathaniel, come and see. And what does Nathaniel discover? But he discovers in the presence of Jesus the fullness of God. Now that may be a strange thing for me to say, but Paul also emphasizes that in Christ the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And when we meditate or reflect upon these passages of Scripture, what do we discover as we come and see for ourselves? Come and discover, I pray, the Christ, the one who lives a human life, one who enters in to life, and to life in all its fullness, and to be aware of his experience of the encounters with some of the 
most outrageous people that you and I might not even give second thought to, to come and see for yourselves. To come and see for ourselves, in the words of Howard Thurman, the work of Christmas. And Howard Thurman writes, when the songs of the angels is still, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds go back with their flock. The work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among others, to make music in the heart. The work of Christmas has just begun. Come and see. And it's particularly fascinating when we come and see, with all the challenges we face in our lives at this particular time in our history, politically, economically, socially, physically, we're being asked to do some very important and yet painful things. But we know that sometimes we need to do the right thing. And the right thing is how Christmas begins. To tell the story of Jesus. To live out the gospel of love. And to challenge through our actions and our words, behaviors and governmental policies and nations that deny, deny the value and dignity of every human being. We as followers of Jesus are reminded that it's not just about individual pietism or social gathering, but it's about living a gospel that is life-giving and not life-denying. It is about a gospel that speaks for the well-being of the world, of the whole of creation. It's a gospel of love that is life-giving. So come and see. And one of the hymns that we sing here fits for me how to balance our faith and our lifestyle and the challenges we face. I can't sing it, I'm not allowed to sing it. I, the Lord of sea and sky, have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I have made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am. It is I, Lord. I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of wind, and flame. I will tend the poor and the lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will save. Fine as bread I will provide, till their hearts be satisfied. I will give life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am. It is I, Lord. I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you lead me, do you think Philip and Andrew and Nathaniel and others, when Jesus said, follow me, come and see, 
They knew fully what they were getting themselves into. They didn't. Nor do you and I. But we walk that journey of faith with the confidence that God journeys with us. Amen. Let us pray. Sometimes I can't even read my own writing when I prepare all of this. That's why I hesitated for a moment. So let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for peace in the world, remembering especially our sisters and brothers in the south of us, and sisters and brothers throughout the world who face daily the turmoils of war and injustice. Lord, grant that we may live together in justice and faith. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our country, Canada, and especially for the Queen Elizabeth, for Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, for Doug Ford, our Premier, and for all in authority. The Lord help them to serve the people according to his holy will. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for children and young, pe and young people as they stay home to continue their education for teachers and parents who assist them in their learning. The Lord guide their growth and development. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick. And I pause in silence as we uphold in our hearts and in our prayer, those whom we know are suffering with pain and sickness and disease. The Lord deliver them and keep them in his love. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are condemned to exile, prison, harsh treatment, or hard labor. For the sake of justice and truth, the Lord support them and keep them steadfast. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and all who bear witness to the gospel. For the peoples of St. Hilda's and St. Luke's, and for Trinity, for Todd, our bishop, for Archdeacon Tanya Fibbs, for Anne, our Metropolitan, Linda, our primate, Mark, Indigenous Archbishop, Susan Johnson, Bishop in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, Mark Price, Lutheran Bishop of the Eastern Synod in Canada, Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury, Pope Francis, and all the Patriarchs of the East, the Lord direct our lives in the same spirit of service and sacrifice. Lord, hear our prayer. Living God, you have revealed your Son as the Messiah. 
May we hear his word and follow it and live as children of light. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. And together, gathering all our prayers together, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let our eyes be your eyes, Lord, sharing compassion, warmth, and love. Let our hands be your hands, Lord, bring healing with their touch. Let our ears be your ears, listening where there is need. Let our words be your words bringing comfort, joy, and peace. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all those whom you love and care about this day and always. Amen. We extend birthday greetings to those who are celebrating birthdays or wedding anniversaries or at other significant events in their lives. And we continue to pray for one another, especially those in our community who are grieving, who face the reality of loneliness and fear. We are people of God who pray. Stay safe, stay home, and most of the time I'm working from home, except when I come in to do the uh, service. God bless. Keep safe. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.